This is yesterday's article on Science Alert. The bones of a giant Ice Age bear and ancient humans have been discovered in an underwater Mexican cave. This is by Carly Casella. And these are images by Roberto Chavez Arche. During the last Ice Age, more than 10,000 years ago, the bridge between North and South America was guarded by a daunting array of beasts, including a wolf-like carnivore and the largest bear ever to roam the earth. An ancient graveyard buried at the bottom of an underwater cave in Mexico has turned up not just the skull of a large, short-faced bear, the Arcotherium wingae, and the bones of a wolf-like dog, the Protocoi Chion troglodides, but also the skeletons of ancient sloths and tapirs, saber-toothed cats, cougars, elephant-like gonferthers, bears, dog-like animals, even a couple of humans more than 12,000 years old. Described by researchers as an underworld of exquisitely preserved fossils, they were found in the Hoyo Negro pit in the Sac Actun cave, the system on the eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Hoyo Negro means black hole in Spanish, and the pit is natural, a natural time capsule from the late Pleistocene. That's because thousands of years ago, the eponymous black hole was a bone-dry death trap for unsuspecting animals. Falling nearly 60 meters to their deaths, that's 200 feet, the cave fooled many an ancient species into its clutches, and as melting glaciers filled the pit, their stay in the depths became, of course, permanent. Looking over the collection of bones collected over the past 12 years, researchers from the U.S. and Mexico were most impressed by the giant bear and wolf remains, which were collected some years ago, but were previously misidentified. Finding bones in the tropics of Central America is really a rarity, but the discovery of these two species in particular was a shock. Up until now, scientists thought the short-faced bear and wolf were only found on the continent below, South America that is, more than 2,000 kilometers away. The whole previous record of this particular type of bear is just known from a few locations in South America, and those are fragmentary remains. Lead author and paleontologist from the East Tennessee State University, Blaine Schubert, said. He said, so we went from not having any of this type of bear outside of South America to now having the best record of this type of bear from the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. During one of the many crossover events between North and South America, these two predators might have stopped to smell the flowers, ultimately making their home in the lush region. Another possibility, the author says, is that after making it all the way south, the creatures moved north once again during or after the last full glacial event between 35,000 and 12,000 years ago. The presence, along with a diverse sloth assemblage, suggests a mere uh, it's a, mere, a more complex history of these organisms in Middle America. They say we suggest that landscape and ecological changes caused by latest Pleistocene glaciation supported an interchange pulse that included A. wingae, P. protoglitus, and Homo sapiens. Indeed, many among the many skeletons found in this exquisite cave system, the most exciting discovery came in 2007 when researchers found two human skeletons, one of which was a teenage girl who lived approximately 13,000 years ago. These are some of the oldest human skeletons ever found in the Western Hemisphere, and evidence that our ancestors once used to live alongside a diversity of giant ground sloths, towering bears, and fierce wolf-like carnivores. This study was uh, published in Biology Letters, and it's on Science Alert.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.